Welcome back. This time of year, it's uh, common for folks to experience seasonal defective disorder. It's better known as SAD. Couple that with uh, what we've gone through the last year, the pandemic. It's good to know how to identify it, number one, but how do you get help? And joining us today, this morning, Brianna Young from Mercy One Des Moines Psychiatric Residency Clinic uh, to give us some more info on what this is because, uh, Brianna, first off, good morning. This isn't just what you would call winter blues, correct? Correct. It's it's uh, well, seasonal affective is very similar to to the winter blues. It's it's the uh, the DSM. It's the actual real diagnosis of what winter blues. Winter blues is kind of the uh, phrase that a lot of people are very familiar with. Seasonal affective disorder is the the technical phrase to it. All right. So how do you know if you have it? Because we just mentioned this last year has been tough on on all of us. There's more anxiety. Uh, some folks have gone through some job loss. Uh, what specifically can you point to and say this is the seasonal affective disorder and not just the pandemic or not just the winter blues? Sure, they're they're really coinciding together. Um, I think COVID definitely is exasperating the seasonal affective um, disorder of a lot of folks. Um, seasonal affective disorder typically comes in the form of kind of a temporary depression. Um, you're experiencing the hopelessness, the isolation, lacking motivation, um, kind of slowing of the, the ability to process just thoughts on a daily basis, and just not feeling overall great. And seasonal affective by definition is two years of consecutive feelings like that during the seasons, typically running from um, October to, to early March. Um, a lot of folks with the, the seasonal affective will see resolution to their um, lack of motivation and those feelings come um, longer days, warmer weather, um, just about the March, April time. Um, some people will extend just a little bit into summer. Um, with COVID though, COVID has really exasperated all of this because we're isolating more. We're being told let's isolate quarantine um, away from folks while there's, there's a uh, electronic opportunities, social opportunities to engage through Zoom, FaceTime, other things like that, um, people are not having the contact that they once did. So that on top of the exasperation of the anxiety and depression, like you mentioned, can make things feel a lot worse than they once did. And while that is where the folks over at your clinic can come in and help, what should people do? What's the first step? and how do they get that help to get over this so it doesn't lead to something worse? Absolutely. Um, people, the biggest and best first step that people could do is just to recognize, and while it's hard to recognize that, may recognize that they're not alone. COVID is affecting all of us nationwide. Um, seasonal affective affects many, many people. In fact, uh, make it okay. Um, Iowa indicates that one in five people will experience some sort of mental illness during their lifetime. So they're not alone in that. Yeah. Um, so first off, recognizing that they're not they're not in this by themselves. But um, after that, definitely reaching out for some help um, if they feel that they need someone to talk to uh, outside of their family and friends. Um, there's um, mental health therapists available, psychiatrists if they feel the need for a little bit higher level of care. Lots of times your primary care doctor can help you through those things. Um, some other basic things, um, get outside, walk, exercise as you're able. Um, if you're not able, at the very least, you know, pull open those blinds and curtains. Let some of that yeah. light shine let in. Let the light in. So used to. Yes, absolutely. Right. 